horrible things he said, you know? Like, I felt like I was nobody, you know? And she was putting on Facebook that I was a fat ass bitch who liked girls and all this stuff, and then people would comment on it. So that really, I don't know what I did to her to make her do that. I, I didn't know like what to do like like I I was a really like afraid to tell somebody because because if I did I was scared yeah I was scared you know our children are dying every day because they're being bullied they're being bullied in schools they're being bullied on playgrounds it's no joke every day. Tens of thousands of children stay home from school out of fear of being bullied. It shouldn't happen, you know? I mean, it doesn't even matter who you are, you know? Because the truth is, uh, when I was four years old, I, I was diagnosed with autism, you know? Because he didn't really understand what it was and who I was, you know? He thought like I was, I was like a weird and crazy person, you know? Did he make fun of you because you were autistic? He didn't, well, I mean, he didn't know what, what it was, you know. I tried explaining it to him, but he didn't really care. So, I left school, though. You did? For seventh grade, a lot of it. Okay. Now, you left school because of the bullying? Because it got so bad that I wanted to hurt myself. I didn't, thankfully, but I got, I had to go somewhere else for seventh grade. It's no joke. It's time to take a stance against verbal violence as a society, as a country, as a parent. We got to stop turning our back against it. Because again, it's not their children, it's our children. And if they're not dying physically, they're dying emotionally. And nobody knows that better than I because I was a victim of bullying, and I became a bullier. And I get to go all over the country and tell thousands and thousands of students how I watched my sister die a horrific death because I beat up her eternal spirit so bad, she became a drug addict. It hurt a lot. Like I remember crying over it because I didn't understand why people were saying this stuff because other people were commenting and I didn't know that all these people felt that way about me because I'm quiet, I don't really do anything. So I didn't know why this was happening. He had gone after one of my friends, you know. I I mean, I've had friends, you know. The, one of them was cyber bullied, you know, because he felt like the exact same way as I did, you know, like, like feeling sad and he felt like he was nobody either. Mostly cyberbullying. Like, this girl doesn't say stuff to me in school because she stands behind people, which I don't really let it get to me as bad now, but she's brought it to like Instagram and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she got in trouble, but she's still starting to do it again. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, well, bullying, in order to be bullied, it has to be at a school, it has to be in a playground or the schoolyard, but most of bullying takes place behind a cell phone or behind a computer. That's where the worst bullying is taking place because there's no face. So they don't have to worry about what they say when they type a message. But what they need to worry about is the damage, the everlasting damage that they're causing, the reputation that they're ruining. You know, when you have Twitter and you have social media and, and Facebook and stuff, what's happening is the bullying that used to happen in person is coming home at night. And it's it's kind of a 24-hour thing. So I don't think it's going to go away, but I think that what we can do is um, see positive examples of how to end it and really get the message out there that cyberbullying needs to stop. September the 22nd, 1991, I was involved in a situation on the police department where several individuals tried to take my partner's life and my life in a very horrible, tragic, horrific shootout where I had to take the life of a young man. And not only did I bully myself and go into this prison of darkness, I was engulfed in hate and bitterness 
but then I began to bully my, my own son because I didn't want him in my world and what I saw and what I was going through. I didn't know how to talk about my feelings because I was suffering from post-traumatic stress. And I wasn't talking about it. And because I wasn't talking about it, not only did I isolate myself, but I isolated my own children. And I could tell you horror stories. I never beat my children, but you don't have to beat somebody to hurt them because they lost their daddy for a very, very long time. But I'm back, and you could come back too. You gotta talk about it. Have to talk, share your feelings. I think a bully, you know, what, why they do those things, you know, cause, you know, they, they feel the exact same way, you know, cause, cause they want to like, like make other people feel bad about themselves because to make them feel better, you know, and that's not the right, and that's not it right thing to do, you know, it's never. You could say something to them right now, the past bullies and this current girl, what would you say to them? I don't know why you bullied me so bad, because I didn't do anything to you. Is there anything you want to tell them about how you felt and what they did to you? You can find um, some great information at fozy.org as well as a platformforgood.org. And those are two of the resources that we have um, for parents, teachers, and teens. We have great parent safety contracts. We have amazing blogs and stories written by teenagers as well as teachers and others where they share their own online experiences and kind of put forward that message of good online. So what could you do as a child? Number one, talk about it. Share it with others. Take a stance against it. Don't turn your back against it. If you see somebody being bullied, whether it's in person or whether it's being cyber bullied, tell somebody. I mean, it was wrong of me, you know, cause I, cause I was holding it in for the past couple of months, you know? I was wrong for doing that and you know, it's, you know, it's, I really, I really should have told somebody right away and you know. Bullying can cause and will cause post-traumatic stress if you don't talk about it. So post-traumatic stress can be that long-term effect that I went through for a very long time, but I still go through where you get reoccurring nightmares, you, you become isolated, you develop anxiety disorders. During the summer, like when schools ended, me and my mom were going somewhere and I had a major, major anxiety attack. I kept grabbing onto things. My mom thought I was having a seizure and she took me over to the hospital like to get checked up and, and to see what was going on. I thought, me and her thought I was having a seizure and it was an anxiety attack. What was it brought on by? It was brought on by bullying. What would you like to say to a bully? Someone who is the bullier. Great question. What do I want to say to the bullier? I was the worst bullier. I understand. Somebody that's bullying has been bullied. It's time to take a look at yourself. I had to look at myself. I had to open up. I had to forgive myself first because of the bullying that I caused my own son and my own family and my own sister. I had to forgive myself and forgive yourself. Talk about it, share it with others. Write it down if you can't talk about it. Express yourself through a camera, through a healthy hobby, a healthy sport, through art, but not expressing yourself. You the bullier, it doesn't stop. When teens are trying to not just stop bullying, but spread messages of good and kind of empower one another. So there have been some examples where, um, you know, in the past when kids have been bullied at school, uh, they go and start a Twitter feed, a, a Twitter um, handle, where they only tweet out really positive stories and compliments to one another. I'm angry because I didn't like what you said to me. I didn't like what you did. You should be ashamed of yourself because I, because I felt like I was no one, nobody, when this, when this whole thing happened. I, I don't know. And, and I hope, 
and I hope you will, um, I want you to grow out to be a a a a, a great man like like every like 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 any guy could ever be, and I do honestly want you to forgive yourself, and and one day I will I I do f and yes I do forgive you, but I will never forget the things that you said. <laughs>